was talking to a friend of mine, and as I was talking to a friend of mine, he was telling me about his daughter who is in public school. And as he talked to me about his daughter being in public school, he shared with me about the bullying that goes on. He shared with me about the cruelty that is not uncommon in school. Now, as I was thinking about this, I was really thinking there's a problem in society, and the problem in society is that once you get out of school, the bullying doesn't stop. But what ends up happening is, honestly, if you are a person of character, if you are a person of faith, you are going to live in the midst of a society in which other people are going to have divergent ideas to what you have. And one of the things that I really want to encourage you in is as God reveals himself to you, if you are new along this path, you're going to find that there is resistance. And I want to encourage you because the resistance is not resistance against you necessarily. And sometimes what ends up happening is we as people of faith really believe that if we just communicated in a different way, people would get the concept, people would understand it, and people would not be antagonistic and sometimes even downright mean about what we're trying to share with them. The truth of the matter is, is that Scripture says that the human heart is fallen, that at the very beginning of history, in the very beginning of time, there was opportunity for us to walk with God and our first father and our first mother, known commonly in the vernacular as Adam and Eve, ended up making a decision which separated them from God. And really what you face today, when you face cruelty, when you face people who are looking to make fun, when you are facing trying to take what is precious to you, what is important to you, what you have learned of who God is, and you try and share it with other people, sometimes you will hit the backlash of what goes on with humanity. And I wish that once you were out of 8th grade or 10th grade or 12th grade or out of school or re reached 30 years old or some other high watermark that the cruelty would stop. But it is inherent and it is built in to the human condition. And part of what goes on with those who have received the Word of God, part of what goes on with those who have received the Spirit of God is that you are given a toughness. And people don't think that a toughness is a good thing, but on a certain level, being able to have bravery, being able to have character, being able to face abuse, being able to face difficulty, and even being able to face scorn and ridicule is something that is part of the growth process of a believer. And Yeshua told a parable about seed being spread, and he talked about how some seed fell into good soil, and it planted, it rooted, it grew, and it became fruitful. But he also talked about seed that, that fell along the path, that fell in thorns, and that fell in other areas. And that seed did not end up becoming fruitful and productive. And I really want to encourage you that if you have been in a place, in a position where you have been the butt of cruel jokes, if you've been in a position where you've opened up your heart tenderly to share with people and the message that you had that meant so much to you simply wasn't received, if you've been in a circumstance because of something beyond your control, whether it's something that you've been born with, whether it's an ethnicity, whether it's just something that's part of you has led to a point where you have been abused, you have been belittled, you have been treated as less than respected, I want you to know that this is not how God sees you. And many people come to a point of cruelty. Sometimes the cruelty that they come to is because of their own insecurity, and sometimes it's because 
of their own anger, their own brokenness. But wherever it comes from is not important to you. What is important to you is that you know that God loves you, you know that God is with you, you know that in all your limitations, in all of your giftings, God has made you to be the person that you are. And I really hope that in the midst of this, that you understand that we are a people that God has made for the purpose of belonging to him. And whether or not we belong to this present age, not too important. Whether or not we are accepted by the people around us, we long to have family, we long to be loved, we long to have our tribe and our people. But if you are learning that some of the tribes and some of the peoples of the kind of folks who are around you aren't your tribe and aren't your people, it's an instructive moment, but it should not tear down who you are. And by drawing close to the Lord and finding the path that he has for you, finding the acceptance and the love that God has for you, I want to promise you that I believe that God has a hand on you such that you are going to end up finding the tribe, finding the people who love you, and finding those whom you can be with and you can safely be yourself. This is another reason why I believe that people should find a congregation. They should find a worshiping community. They should find people that accept them, that love them, that encourage their growth, and that they can receive from and they can also give to. Shalom. Thank you.